Zo. Goedemorgen. Ik ga deze Oops, drie ga ik pakken. Ja. Fellas, had to go to Dordrecht, so on the way back home, I did a little detour to um, a game store. I forgot the name at the moment. Hmm. That's my uh, Burger King ticket. Ain't gonna see no store name on that. So I picked up, I caved in, I finally picked up an official PS4 controller. It was 75, but these are the colors that I like. It's brand new in the box. And you only find the fakes out there, you know? Never the originals or second hand, and they're like really bad conditions. Games wise, I picked up Pack Panic without manual. This is an X rental, so I'll have to remove some stickers. Uh, yeah, not the greatest game, but you know, I like my games, my Sega games and spend some cash there like i always do sadly sparkster paid 50 i said well man 75 is too much 50 is okay and so he gave it to me for 50. no it's not true he's he looked it up online this one is about right rightly priced uh 30 bucks so mr do i do believe the american version is more expensive i don't know man Mr. Do. It's one of those typical games. Um, I don't know why they... Because you also have a Neo Mr. Do for the Neo Geo. It's like one of those early... Uh, um, one of those early video games, classic video games. Why they remade it so much. Especially in the 90s when nobody was doing that. Well, except Atari, of course. Robocop versus Terminator, 30 euros, which is also on price, so no deals here, man, but some cool games. 150 was the total to tell, eh? uh, And this one, I think this was a decent price, 30 euros, it's complete. Uh, the case, because these cases, these are the um, European uh, Dreamcast cases, they break like it's insane how, my, how, how quickly they break. And this is one of those games, I know it's not the best RPG out there, but um, when it came out on the Dreamcast, it was like, oh, finally an RPG for the Dreamcast and everybody wanted to have it. Game Galaxy in Rotterdam. So yeah, I uh, went a week away on holiday and my wife said, well, you can go one day of hunting and I didn't find anything literally anything i went to five or six thrift stores i went to uh two games three game stores all was a bust one simply didn't exist anymore the other one uh just did pokemon cards and like um magic cards things like that no more games and then there was like a computer exchange which was okay but nothing retro only like ps2 and upwards and the day afterwards, we went to uh, Kruller Müller, which is like uh, one of the, the beautiful, most beautiful museums. All the Van Gogh paintings, you know, out of your school courses are there. And on the way there, my wife said, well, let's pick up some sandwiches in the supermarket to go there. And across the supermarket was like this um, household wear stores, but like a really old, like you saw that was an old store. They still have modern stuff, of course, but you know, in these type of family stores, they always have old stock. So I actually went in there looking for older toys, but that was all right. Everything was still pretty recent. And I went to the lady and I said, man, maybe you have some old, um, some old games, uh, sto uh, toys somewhere. And she was, nah, nah, or some, do you sell video games? Because I saw some VTech stuff. She says, no, we don't have any vid video games. And Literally, as I said that, as she said that, I looked into the glass case and I saw the Game Boy logo just 
out of the corner of my eye and said, well, can I have a look at that? And she said, oh, sure. She opens the glass case and it's actually like full of Wii and PS2 era stuff, but also some other stuff. So for example, <laughs> it's insane. I picked up a seal, Billy Hatcher. Everything was 50% off, so it was 30 euros. Uh, I had this game back in the day, bought it brand new, loved it. I initially bought it to unlock the Knights the time score game that you could play on your Game Boy Advance, but it's a fun game. It's not perfect. I mean, sometimes the X, but, it, but I love it. And she also had some, for example, um, Quicks, sealed, a sealed Game Boy Quicks. So she had it marked at 30 euros, so 50% off is uh, 15 euros. And then also, this is new, but of the, the wrapper is gone, of course. Um, 36 euros, 50% off, but she gave me everything to me for 60. Uh, Deja Vu, uh, one and two for the Game Boy Color. It's like a really weird selection of games. I'll show you the little clip of the store. Uh, she had other stuff like uh, Mario Tennis. I can't remember everything, but she had some good stuff. And it was just like hidden underneath other like uh, cell phone cables and things like that. So pretty sweet. So yeah, um, I don't know if it's the end of the video or I'll put some, add some other stuff, but catch you guys later. Whoop. Finally found something in the bins. It's been a long ass motherfucking time. First found this uh, buggy, surf's up dude. And then found this uh, pretty beat up Mikey, but it's a TMNT nonetheless. It's been a long ass while since I found something decent at the bin. So, oh, when his function still kind of works, but his legs are busts. Well, I don't know if they're really busts or just came apart. That's something we'll have to check. Anyways, still a cool find. And yeah, this one is probably missing tons and tons of parts, but still, it's cool to find a vehicle you don't have. Uh, yeah, that's it. Catch you guys later. Bye. Oh, and I found this one. It's for my son. Recently has been obsessed with Mario, so uh, yeah, why not? Hello fellas, a long time that I did a driving video, went to the bins, not much there, only this uh, HP 15C calculator, they go for about a hundred. go for about a hundred bucks on uh, on eBay so that's pretty nice I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or sell it uh, yesterday I had to go to a, a totally different place and I found a little toy store there and they had this old cool Nintendo display case which I uh, asked to purchase but they said no of course uh, maybe I should make a, a cash offer I'll make a little clip of it I'll post it right after this and picked up one game there, Konami Arcade Classics for $24.99. They also had a semi-sealed copy of um, Contact, which is a very cool RPG, but I already have a copy and like the seal was in half, so yeah, no point buying that. And sealed copies of Mr. Driller Drill Spirits, which is also a game I already have and like it's an expensive game, so it's not really worth buying. Otherwise, they had like a meager selection of uh, games, so yeah, not, nothing to actually write home about. Uh, but cool anyway, and the cupboard was very cool. No uh, old toys or anything like that. The oldest games they had were Wii and DS, so not super old, but still cool to see in the wild. At the bins today, virtually nothing. I got some small Lego pieces. Uh, and that was about it, yeah. Shame because like there were a lot of bins with like small pieces in, so you always hope like there's some GI Joe turtle weapons in there, but alas, 
It was nothing but good old crap. Catch you guys later. Oh, we guys. It's been a while since my last video. Uh, these are the pickups of, I say, July and a little bit of August, a little bit of June. So, yeah, let's dive right into it. Last weekend, I met, met up with Julian and he gave me these Bucky O'Hare uh, comic book. It's really lovely looking. Um, yeah, if you don't know, this was a comic book in the 80s which then later was turned into a TV show, a toys and a video game. And this is actually the reprint of the original comic. So I personally, I have a manga version from like 10 years ago. So it's with the entire story. But I personally think this is a really good comic book. And thank you, Julian, for providing me with an issue. However, I'm not so thankful, Julian, that you turned me on to Kevin Kobas which is a guy who hunts for mainly laser discs in Japan, but he also tends to sell video games from time to time. And yeah, he had a copy of um, The Last Blade, Japanese version for sale. Really good price. Um, it's missing the manual, but I don't really mind that much. Um, yeah, so I picked it up. I forgot how much, but it, of course it was expensive, it's a Neo Geo game, but it was like 100 or 200 dollars under the average eBay price, so that's cool. This one um, is King of Fighters 2002, one of the few last ones I needed for the collection. I still need 99 and 2003, however I doubt I'll ever be able to afford 2003. <laughs> In any way, this one was also very uh, um, nicely priced. It's complete with the manual and everything. Um, this, however, was funded with some sales I did. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, so yeah, it was free for me. Well, free. <laughs> one day I paid everything, of course. So on to the next Kevin Kobas batch. Uh, he was selling some more video games and I picked out Rockman 5 for the Game Boy. You don't see this one too often, so yeah, that's why I picked that one up. Also picked out Predator uh, for the Famicom, which is uh, actually a Western developed game, but this has a different uh, level layout. You start with fighting the Predator instead of um, fighting... Um, yeah, just a regular level, so it's a bit of a different game. And was cheap, like 10 euros. Um, then I also finally purchased this one. He also had like half price. Granted, it's yellowed here, but still otherwise in a good condition. This is an arcade pro card. Uh, what does this thing do? It actually adds more memory to your PC engine, which allow you uh, to play be better or more... Um, graphically intense games one of the best examples is the shoot 'em up of course um, um, sapphire uh, i have a bootleg copy of a really f beautifully made bootleg copy you really also see that it's a bootleg so it's not exactly a copy of the original um, but yeah this is one of those uh, things you need to play that game and apparently it's the best pc engine game ever so and he also sold me, this one was also pretty cheap, only 35 euros. Um, it's kind of beat up. Well, actually it's quite beat up. I don't know if the cracks were already there. Um, this is a, a Otello Multivision. And if you're wondering, 16 bitum, what the hell did you buy now? This is actually just a Sega SG-1000 clone. Uh, which means it plays all the early Sega games that the SC3000 computer does or the SG1000 Mark II. Um, so the really early Master System stuff. Um, it wasn't released anywhere else except for in Japan. This one is quite quirky because it has an Otello game built in and it also has uh, a built-in joystick. So there is a second port, but I don't know if that's solely for a second player 
or if you can also use it to just regularly play games. Um, let me stop slacking off. I haven't tested it yet, but condition-wise, it's not perfect. But it's just one of those things I wanted to have. Another internet purchase is Alwa's Awakening, the 8-bit version. I really hate they do these stupid slide covers. I prefer this cover anyways. Um, it's a yeah, uh, side-scrolling game, adventure game, and it looks to be really fun. It also has like a modern version. So yeah, lovely cartridge. Smells funky. Can't wait to play this actually. <laughs> and then oh, another game I really need to show you guys. I came last week in the mail and yeah, I've been playing this a ton with my son. He really, really loves it. He really enjoys it. So yeah, pretty cool. It's a fun game. Um, the sprite work is amazing, very funny, very uh, accessible for young children, so that makes it cool. Um, another internet release. This one got a lot of hate. I put it on my GDMU so I can keep my copy shield. This is Shadow Gangs, which is a Shinobi clone. Uh, the art style gets a lot of flack. Uh, but I actually enjoy it. It's a uh, it's a fun game. It's not perfect by any means, but for the, like the thirty or forty bucks I paid for it, why not? A brand new Dreamcast game in twenty twenty two. Who could ask for more? And I went to Giovanni's store today and I found this interesting thing: Willy Jetman, which is a Metroidvania shooter action, full of exploration, humor, and awesome final bosses so yeah it's like the deluxe um, how do you call it collector's edition or something i hate those things uh, it comes with like a usb uh, jet set willy i don't know <laughs> what to do with that uh, tote bag that's pretty cool the game of course hopefully yeah it's in there and Jet Set Willy, like a postery thingy do. Yeah, it's a poster, of course. Manual slash poster. I put it in the box. Oh, it belongs. Ooh, nah. I'll have to hang this on my jacket. And I also picked up Fairy Tail. Uh, he had it marked as 10. I think somebody else also sold it for 10. I don't have this one yet, so yeah, pretty sweet. In total, I paid 30. And he also uh, threw, in, threw in a copy of CVG magazine, Computer and Video Games. This is the oldest video game magazine in the world, I believe. Uh, I used to read it in the mid-90s. So newer issues than this one I bought, but yeah, still it is amazing. Uh, it was a multi-platform magazine from the UK and I used to love what, uh, re uh, looking at it, it mentions the Jaguar, the Amiga CD32. So yeah, pretty awesome stuff. Big Apple launch for the Jaguar. Raiden. This vertically scrolling coin up has already been seen on the SNES Mega Drive and PC Engine. Atari alleged that the conversion of the Jaguar will be the most uh, accurate yet. <laughs> this game here that the Robinson's Requiem was never released. So yeah. Zool. I love old games like this. Mag uh, sorry, old game magazines like this. 
T, a commercial for a CDI game. Nice. Wire. I had that game, I never played it actually. Yeah, these magazines are all sorts of awesomeness. I love these 90s commercials that had absolutely nothing to do with the game. You had that a lot back in the day. Is that some more CD stuff? Oh no, it's for the 3DO. Mad Dog McCree. So yeah, this is going to go on the toilet and I'm going to read it. Personally for me, back in the day, this was the best magazine because it had all the platforms, lots of color. It was a beautiful magazine and it was also pretty cheap. I paid less than five euros for a copy of the UK magazine. So that was cool. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and catch you guys later. Bye.